Houston, we have Starlink. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back. So yes, I decided to pull the trigger on RV version of Starlink satellite internet. And the box just arrived today. And um, yeah, uh, I was not prepared for the box arriving today. I literally ordered this last Wednesday and it is not even a week and it's here. So basically I went online, ordered it last Wednesday. I got the notification that it shipped on Friday and today is Monday. And it arrived here at my buddy Keith's place where I'm hanging out for a couple of weeks before heading south. So I decided to get it shipped here and yeah, it's here already. So less than a week shipping, got the box, haven't opened it yet. Thought I'd share that experience with you guys. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Basically, this video will probably be more or less an unboxing, a um, kind of vague setup. I'm not 100% sure how I want to set it up yet. Um, possibly thinking about a pole, but that's later on down the road. So basically, we'll just get it set up, get it working, and then we'll go from there. After that, I'll probably kind of let, you know, use it for a week, see how it runs, do a couple speed tests, that kind of thing. And that will be more of the end of the video. And uh, yeah, we'll see how Starlink works from Brooks, Alberta, and um, then I'll uh, update you from the road as we go um, different places. So, yeah. Here we go. All right, so I'm pretty sure if you've been curious about Starlink, you've probably checked some of these videos out already in the form of unboxing videos. So I'll try and keep this fairly short. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys exactly what it looks like when we open it up. Okay, sit please, sit, good boy. Okay, so plastic, oh. we have our stand. So this is your stand and a little bit more plastic. Are you helping? Yes, thank you. What do you got in your face? Don't you look in a mirror before you do videos? Not like Dad does. Back it up, please. Okay, so we have our dish. The rectangular dish. And then we have the modem. Hmm. So they've plugged in the dish already to the cord. So you have your dish and then your 75 foot cord and um, then your power cord. And that's pretty much it. Little instruction guide. So it looks fairly easy, easy enough. So I'm going to, oh, um, something I did read online. Um, you want to uh, download the Starlink app before you start setting things up, just so you have it, um, especially because you don't want to be having to download it after you're trying to get internet. So hopefully, you have some internet prior to getting your Starlink and you can download the app. So yeah, basically it's like four items. The pipe has a good notch here. And if you look within the stand, there's also a notch bottom of the circle right here. So just gonna line that up. Now I'm keeping the cord out top here because I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to be mounting it right now so I don't want to run it through and out the bottom uh, not yet anyways so oh I see okay so just so you know we do have a button and that's to push it all the way in and snap it in so notches on the bottom that there push this button on the back there we go snapped in so that's pretty much it for that now <clears throat> I'm gonna take the router inside and the power cord inside and then we'll come back and wire this through I think I have an idea I'll be right back
So these both plug into the bottom of your rotor. Pretty self-explanatory. The power cord has a kind of a cloverleaf shaped three-prong dealie. It pops in. Make sure you push it all the way in. And as soon as you do that, uh, there's a little light comes on. And then your dish mount is the one with the angled thing on the edge. Make sure it's pushed in all the way, flush with the bottom of the modem. It will probably live in around here somewhere. So, as far as I know, we're now wired. Not connected yet, but we're plugged in. We have power to the modem. And uh, let's go outside and see what we see. All right, dish is pointing straight up. So yeah, there's the dish. And if we pan up here, you'll see the dish is on the ground and there's just absolutely nothing as far as facing north goes that is close enough or tall enough that will obstruct this thing. So I'm thinking we should be pretty good. Hey friends, we're all hooked up. Uh, setting up the network was easy. Basically you just open the Starlink app and find the network that says stinky and basically you just type in whatever you want to call yours and a password and you're good to go it was easy peasy i actually had to uh forget um keith's network because he is also on starlink so it took me a little bit there but that's not something that most people are going to run into so i'm just kind of going to leave that over there um but setting up mine was easy and um I went on the app here and was looking for obstructions and it's collecting data. So I did move it a little bit further out from the RV. It's pointing north, found its satellites apparently. Well, it did because I just did a, an advanced speed test. So um, Starlink speed router to internet, 181 megabits per second. Download, nine megabits upload. Wi-Fi speed iPhone to Wi-Fi router. So that's basically my phone is the only thing connected right now to the router, to my network, my Starlink. And uh, basically it said 69 megabytes per second download and 84 megabytes per second upload. Now you gotta remember the modem is inside behind a sheet of aluminum and you know the RV wall and that kind of thing. And it's kind of right there tucked in behind the corner. So am I happy? Damn right I am. Now, as a little caveat, Rogers Wireless, who is my cell data provider, 5G, apparently. I've never even seen 30 megabytes per second download, let alone 69 or 181. So, yeah, um, they're soon going to be losing a customer. Um, I'll probably keep them for voice and maybe a little bit of data for, you know, Google Maps while I'm driving and that kind of thing. And maybe for the odd chance where... I'm somewhere where I can't get Starlink um, or it's congested or something like that. But yeah, as soon as I can, I'll be dialing them back to practically nothing. Um, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but. but yeah. So yeah, within the app, if you click on visibility. So the first little bit here is Starlink is still collecting data on obstructions. This will take another six hours, but that doesn't seem to have affected it from hooking up and providing internet so far. Uh, let's go inside, connect the iMac to it, and uh, see what we get. All right, so my Starlink router modem uh, is right beside the computer. So Wi-Fi is gonna be, I mean, it's less, it's like literally eight inches away. So that should not be an issue. And I'm going to start a screen recording here. Dial up a speed test. Pop the old Ookla. Oh. And the Google one. Google one. Oh, wow.
So, as you can see, Google, 76.3 megabytes a second download, 8.37 upload. And we'll go over to here, SpaceX Starlink, go. Now, like I said, Rogers 5G, if I got 30, it was like a spectacular good day and that never, barely ever, ever happened. So, first time out of the gate, Starlink's beaten that pretty much hands down. And I've also heard and read that... Um, your system basically takes a good, you know, 12 to 24 hours to get itself set up and kind of configured and that kind of thing. If that's the case, I'm pretty happy. And if I can get this anywhere and it's unlimited, then perfect. Because basically I am done micromanaging my, I thought was 60 gig, uh, gigabytes of data, but that was only like a one month promo deal, the extra 10. Um, my cell plan is actually only 50 gig. And yeah, it's when you're a graphic designer, a web designer, a photographer, and a YouTube video creator who also posts photos and videos to, you know, Instagram and Facebook, and you're communicating and networking I'm on Twitter quite a lot for my NFT photos and the photo community there. Yeah, this is going to be a game changer for me. So that said, um, I will give it a week or so and I'll uh, check back in and wrap this video up then. But um, yeah, there's kind of a rough, I apologize if it's kind of, you know, camera work was a little rough. I'm um, getting it in the cupboard here and stuff like that, but yeah, I just wanted to show you how I was running it through up into my desk. And yeah, that's that. So, um, just out of curiosity, let's just run one more. Twenty-three point twelve. Decent upload speeds. So twenty-three point twelve download, eighteen point three two upload. We'll go over to the, just the Google speed test and run that again just to see what it says. Wow. It's, see, I don't understand. I'm kind of techie, but I'm not this techie. I don't understand the difference between the Ookla speed test and the Google speed test. Google's just cranking. 126 down, but less upload. So I don't know. Am I disappointed? Am I happy? Pretty effing happy, to be honest. Because, like I said... I'm getting even 30 consistently. It's worth the money to me because that will, uh, you know, like literally I have one, two, three devices and a TV. I'm not on all four at once. Maybe I might have YouTube on the TV while I'm working. And I guess technically the phone would be connected, but... I'm not using all three or all four at once. So for a guy like me, this is going to be a game changer. With that, I will talk to you soon with an update. Um, and yeah. Hey friends, so welcome back to the second part of this Starlink video. I've had the Starlink for about 12 days now. 
And in the next little bit, I'll show you a couple little random speed tests that I've just kind of done out of curiosity over the course of time. But I'm the first to say that this is not a technical video. I'm not going through all the ins and outs of whether it's, you know, technically keeping up with what people expect as far as the, you know, 200 megabytes a second download and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I got it because I needed something a little more reliable and a little more accessible as far as boondocking goes. And something that was unlimited because micromanaging my cell data was getting really old really fast. And as anyone knows, cell towers are not exactly everywhere. So um, I pulled the trigger on a Starlink. Now, to summarize everything up, I am a single guy in an RV. And you saw how I kind of set it up just kind of uh, temporarily until I figure out if I want to put a pole up or anything like that. I'm not sure yet, but let's just get to the nitty gritty. I'm a single guy. I have a TV. I work on an iMac daily. I work remotely. Uh, I do graphics and web design. Obviously, I shoot and edit videos and upload those videos. And for the most part, um, watch a little bit of TV and have my phone and my iPad, which I only use sometimes. And uh, basically, yeah, I have four devices connected to my Starlink router. That would be my TV, my iMac, a phone, and an iPad. Now, over the course of the past 12 days, I have noticed no outages. I have noticed no buffering. Nothing really slow, nothing really out of the ordinary. To be honest, it's been exactly what I expected. It's been reliable. It's been up pretty much every time I've needed it. And I've never witnessed any problems with it. Not so far. Now, I've obviously gone in and checked my stats and, you know, like it, they have the outages listed as, um, I think it's like below one second, below two seconds, and then five seconds or more or whatever. And um, I've looked at all those and there's been the ones that they call network issue should resolve itself. Um, I see quite a few of those. Um, most of them are under the one second mark. So basically, it's probably just a, like a ping thing or a latency thing between the um, Starlink and the satellites, I'm guessing. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a technical guy as far as this goes. But um, yeah, and that's the only thing. I mean, there's no outages here. There's no obstructions because I'm basically got full view of the sky. So it's been totally good. Am I happy? Yeah, totally happy. If this keeps up, if I go places um, that I need to go or want to go and it uh, keeps up with this performance, I'm a happy camper. Literally. So basically the RV version of Starlink for this RVer who works remotely and watches a little bit of TV and has two other devices that he plays around on uh, while watching TV once in a while. It's been fine. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm getting 200 megabytes a second all the time, um, but I'm not a gamer. I'm not, you know, relying on that kind of speed um, to do what I want to do for what I do and for what I need it for. Um, even the odd video call has been fine. For all those things, it's perfect. So yeah, depending on your needs, I can see Starlink being a good solution for you. And um, I'll leave it at that. All right. So if you got anything out of this video, give it a like and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.